Welcome back to another episode of 5 a.m. Theology. We're still in the story of King David this week, but by now David is a lot different than the David we talked about last week who was worshiping as he brought the presence of God to the people. My son's pastor recently said this in a sermon about David. In times of great success and times of peace, it's easy for us to neglect our devotion to the Lord. We tend to rest and relax and we can easily take our eyes off of God to have our concern for God and his glory lessen as we go about our business and enjoy the fruits of our labors that were all given to us by God. Now, David was a man after God's own heart because he worshiped only God for his whole life. But as we've seen with other male leaders in the faith, the older they get, the more sometimes they start to lessen their morals and they go down a slippery slope when it comes to the Lord. And one of the ways that they do it often in the Bible is they fail to instruct their adult children in the Lord. Isaac doesn't confront Esau or Jacob about their bad behavior. Eli doesn't confront his two sons about their wicked behavior as priests. Neither does Samuel when he has children. These men of faith will even go against God and what he has said and let themselves be led into sin instead of bucking the system when it comes to their kids. Sadly, that is very true. And we see it with King David. By the time we get to this point in the scripture we're going to talk about today, King David has a lot of grown children. And scripture tells us several of them were extremely handsome or beautiful. Remember, David was a really good looking guy. And that can make you proud as a parent. But several of David's kids, despite what they looked like, were wicked. David loved his children and that love blinded him. It blinded him to the point when he doesn't even act like the ruler over God's people when his kids are involved in something bad. He overlooks their sin and he doesn't follow God's law when they do something evil. Eventually, David's military commander, Joab, calls David on the carpet for it. Yes, he does. And this happens after David's son, Absalom, is killed. Absalom, David's son, started a civil war while trying to take the throne from his father. As David's troops went to the battle, he told his army commanders not to kill his son, and everybody in the army heard it, but they did it anyway. Absalom was an enemy of King David and the nation. After Absalom is killed, King David's army is slinking back into town because David is wailing and moaning over his son. The reality was his army had just saved his life and the life of the rest of his family too. And Joab hears about David's incredible weeping and mourning, and Joab's had enough. This is what he says to King David in 2 Samuel 19, verses 5 and 6. Joab says, You have today covered with shame the faces of all your servants, who have this day saved your life and the lives of your sons and your daughters and the lives of your wives and your concubines. Because you love those who hate you and hate those who love you, for you have made it clear today that commanders and servants are nothing to you. For today, I know that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead today, then you would be pleased. Those sound like pretty harsh words. Yeah. Confronting a king with those words. Yeah. And no one would expect David not to mourn his son at all at some point. But David was king of Israel. He had duties given to him by God. He had a big, beautiful family on the outside, like you said, Rose, but many of them were rebellious, unsaved wretches. And just to give you a sample of how David handled his duties as a father with the worst of them, I'll, I'll give you a few examples. David was blind to the lustful intentions of his son Amnon over his daughter Tamar, and Amnon raped her. David did nothing. He should have had Amnon killed for rape and for incest. Her brother Absalom eventually murdered Amnon at a sheep shearing party. And this was a party that Absalom had invited King David and all the rest of his brothers to. And David at first didn't want him to go, but Absalom pressed his father. And so David, he gave in. He gave in and let him go. He just takes a little pressing when it's your kid. Yeah. After the murder of Amnon, Absalom flees and goes to the country of his grandfather. Three years later, because David misses him, 
Absalom's brought back. Absalom's real desire had always been to take the throne. Absalom lies to his dad and conspires behind his back to win the hearts of the people. And the whole time he's doing that, he also does things that make David believe he's really a good boy after all. He manipulates and deceives David to get what he wants over and over and over again. And David is blinded every time, every time. Absalom knew his father was weak when it came to his kids and he took total advantage of it. Eventually, Absalom brings this conspiracy that's going on to fruition. And instead of standing his ground, King David flees Jerusalem. And Absalom strolls into Jerusalem, sets himself up on the throne, and sleeps with his father's concubines on the roof of the palace in front of everyone. Absalom is an immoral, ungodly son who hates his father. He hates the father that loves him. And Absalom hates God. King David intentionally put the blinders on the whole time instead of facing the truth and trying to do something about it. And in doing that, David's sinning against God. He sinned against God. Amnon should have been executed. Absalom should have been executed. But David couldn't bring himself to do the right thing when it came to his kids. And look, we're not downplaying how difficult that would have been. No. But David has a higher responsibility. It was more important for David to keep the peace and never bring any consequences. And let's be honest, maybe if he parented those kids, they wouldn't have ended up like that. We don't know, but right. it definitely didn't help that he nope. didn't. He doesn't even bring consequences that was required by God's law. Even after the attempted coup by Absalom, David tells the army, don't kill him. Now, some commentators think that David had hopes that by keeping Absalom alive, eventually he might turn from his sin, love his father, and maybe even turn to God. But David needed to enforce God's law. Yeah, he needed to call him to repentance. Not saying anything didn't work for Absalom. It didn't work for his brother Amnon. And it didn't work for their brother Adonijah, who tried to set himself up on the throne later in King David's life. And you know what it says about Adonijah? First Kings 1 verse 6 says, his father never displeased him by asking him, why have you done thus and so? So instead of displeasing his son, he shuts up and doesn't say anything about anything he does. Yeah. 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 We just see the passivity with his kids his whole life. Yep. Never questioning what your kids are doing, holding back instead of pointing them in a godly direction and never broaching the subject of the Lord with your kids won't save them. In fact, it's going to have the opposite effect. We're called to share the gospel with our kids, to call their sin, sin, and to call them to repentance. Moses says, repeat these words to your children and your children's children. That's what we're called to do. We have to show our children that God comes first in our life before every other human being, including them, including our spouse. That's really the best gift we can give our kids. Because if God's not a big deal to us, he very likely will not be a big deal to our kids. Chris, you mentioned the prophet Eli, whose sons were acting wickedly. Eli watched them blaspheme God. Samuel watched his kids be evil. But they never said a peep about it. They didn't try to restrain them. And they didn't try to call them to repentance. God condemned Eli and his family because Eli was honoring his sons above him. That's in 1 Samuel 2, 29. And God struck those sons down and eventually struck Eli down and his family was cut off. Absolutely. We don't know what King David's kids' younger years were like, but as adults, he's indulgent with them. So his, their younger years probably were the same. He doesn't say anything to them about any of their actions, no matter about how bad, no matter how evil, no, how, no matter how ungodly they are. And he lets their actions manipulate his own, sometimes to the point of sinning against God. His actions had consequences for more than just him. Joab saw it and he called him out for it. And Rose, I was reading a Ligonier article this week about David and Absalom, and they said David's negligence should serve as a caution 
for Christians as parents. Without a doubt. David started on a slippery slope as he aged, especially when it had to do with his children. So did many other people of faith in the Bible. We named a bunch of them. There were some we didn't even name. Chris, like the Ligonier article said, we need to be on guard against that. Our love for our kids needs to be more than just them liking us and them being happy. Amen to that. And that's a great place to end this morning. Have a blessed morning, everybody.